My name is Lindsay Johnston, and I am an Associate Professor of Pediatrics at Yale School of Medicine in New Haven, Connecticut. My name is Christy Bruno, and I am an Assistant Professor of Pediatrics at Yale School of Medicine. This program discusses the composition of surfactant, its basic structure and function, the clinical presentation of an infant with surfactant deficiency, and the treatment options available. The first module in this series discusses pulmonary embryology. The learning objectives for this module are as follows. After completion of this module, participants will be able to describe the histologic and anatomic maturation of the lung and explain the timing of the biochemical maturation of the lung as well as the physiological factors affecting this timing. Lung development plays a significant role in the pathophysiology of lung disease in the preterm infant. The embryonic period occurs first and involves the lung buds developing from the foregut. Next is the pseudoglandular phase when the conducting airways are formed. The candelicular phase involves differentiation of pulmonary epithelium into type 1 and type 2 pneumocytes and the process of surfactant production begins during this phase. During the saccular phase, the alveolar ducts and air sacs form and during late fetal life and continuing through childhood, the alveolar phase involves secondary septation with a dramatic increase in the number of alveoli present. Each of these phases will be discussed in turn. Lung development involves interactions between all three germ layers and is a highly regulated process. Ectoderm creates the neuroendocrine cells, mesoderm becomes the mesenchyme, and endoderm becomes the pulmonary epithelium. The embryonic lungs originate as a bifurcation at the posterior end of the laryngotracheal groove during the third to fourth week of gestation. The lung bud is induced by underlying mesenchyme to form mainstem bronchi, which are well developed by 33 days of gestation. Lobar airways are notable at 37 days of gestation, with formation of the segmental airways by 42 days of gestation. The developing lung enters the pseudoglandular phase between weeks 7 and 18. During this stage, epithelial tubes sprout and branch into the surrounding mesenchyme. By 12 weeks gestation, terminal bronchioles are lined by columnar epithelium and more distally by cuboidal epithelium. These cells have epithelial surface markers and do not produce surfactant. By the end of this stage, the conducting airways have formed and the acinar limits are recognizable. Between 15 and 20 generations of airway branching have occurred under the regulation of factors such as FGF7, FGF10, and TGF-alpha. This image shows the histologic hallmarks of the pseudoglandular phase, including multiple levels of airway branching. During the pseudoglandular phase, the entire air conducting bronchial tree is formed up to the level of the terminal bronchioles. During the canalicular stage, between gestational weeks 7 and 26, three major events take place. First, the lung tissue gains capability to exchange gas. This happens by widening of the peripheral respiratory bronchioles into acini. An acinus is a cluster of cells at the end of the respiratory bronchus that resembles a berry and is the precursor to saccules and alveoli. There is invasion of capillaries with apposition to the air sacs and the air blood barrier thins, allowing gas exchange to occur more efficiently. Also during the canalicular stage, differentiation of type 1 and type 2 pneumocytes from epithelial cells begins. Type 1 pneumocytes are flat cells that cover the majority of the alveolar surface and are the sites of gas exchange. Type 2 pneumocytes are granular, cuboidal cells which cover only about 5% of the alveolar surface. These cells are responsible for surfactant production, which begins around six months of gestation near the end of the canalicular phase. This will be discussed further in Module 2. Between the 26th and 28th weeks of gestation, lung morphogenesis enters its saccular period, during which the terminal airways continue to widen and form cylindrical structures known as saccules. Initially smooth, the internal surface of the saccules soon develops ridges or secondary crests which originate as folds of the epithelium and peribronchial mesenchyme and contain a double capillary layer. The distance between the capillaries and the potential air spaces narrows further until eventually only a thin basal membrane separates them. Maturation in the production and function of surfactant also occurs during this phase. 
The images on this slide contrast the early saccular phase in panel A, which represents about 28 weeks gestation, with the later saccular phase in panel B, which represents 31 weeks of gestation. Please note the marked thinning of the basal membrane and increased number of secondary crests present in panel B when contrasted with panel A. Exactly when the saccular period ends and the alveolar period begins depends upon the definition of what constitutes an alveolus. In the human fetus, the saccular septation initiated with the appearance of the secondary crests continues at a rapid rate so that multifaceted structures analogous to the alveoli of the mature lung can be seen at 32 weeks of gestation. Alveolarization is activated or made operational by various factors including vitamin A, thyroxin, and physical stimuli including stretch from fetal lung fluid. Alveolarization is inhibited or interfered with by a variety of factors including mechanical ventilation, inflammation, hyperoxia or hypoxia, postnatal glucocorticoid administration, and poor nutritional status. Vascular development parallels alveolar development. If alveolarization is disrupted, so too is the process of angiogenesis. Formation of alveoli before birth is not a requisite for survival. Even though airway branching is completed at term gestation, greater than 90% of alveoli are formed after birth. Recent evidence using high-resolution synchrotron radiation x-ray tomographic microscopy shows that new alveoli continue to be formed until adulthood. This slide summarizes the major features of each of the five phases of lung development. Please pause this recording to review the important stages of lung development. To recap the learning points of this module, during the embryonic phase, between four and five weeks of gestation, the lung buds develop from the foregut. During the pseudoglandular phase, between five and 17 weeks gestation, the conducting airways form. During the canalicular phase, between 16 and 25 weeks gestation, the pulmonary epithelium differentiates into type one and type two pneumocytes and surfactant production begins. During the saccular phase, between 24 and 40 weeks gestation, the alveolar ducts and air sacs develop. Finally, during the alveolar stage, which begins late in fetal life and continues into childhood and beyond, there is secondary septation with a dramatic increase in the number of capillaries and alveoli. This concludes Module 1. Thank you for your attention. We would like to acknowledge the American Academy of Pediatrics, the Organization of Neonatology Training Program Directors, Neo Reviews, and Abbott Nutrition for their support of this educational program. This concludes this module.